Great. All good. Um, so good evening, um, community board and staff. And welcome to this meeting as the Featherston Community Board. Uh, due to the COVID-19 restrictions, this meeting is being held via audio video conference. All members participating via audio video conference will count for the purpose of the meeting quorum in accordance with Clause 25B of Schedule 7 to the Local Government Act 2002. The meeting is being live streamed to Council's YouTube channel. The meeting will also be recorded and subject to the recording being of suitable quality will be available on Council's YouTube channel via a link on Council's website. Um, so obviously, as I said before, um, looks like only Mike's the only one we can't see. If you want to speak, Mike, obviously, normally uh, via Zoom, um, you'll put your hand up. But yeah. Obviously, if you can't see you, so just, just give us a yell. Right. Thank you. Um, I'm heading on tonight. Um, so again, just be clear as to whether you are for or against or abstain on those. Um, so we'll kick off. Um, you guys have got your own health and safety stuff in plan. We'll see if your go, screen goes blank. There's something's happened at your house. So um, you look after that yourself tonight. Um, extraordinary business. Do we have any extraordinary business that needs to be added to the agenda? No? Okay, apologies. Uh, we have an apology from Ross through Garrick. Um, have you had any Ross has shifted out of the, or do you want to pass that across, Garrick? Just to confirm, yes, uh, he, he will be resigning shortly, but uh, at this stage, it's an apology from him. So if you could put that in the minutes, please. Thanks, Deb. Can I ask um, if we could put on the agenda, there has been a, a letter from um, SWBG about um, a planting in the South Wairapa by the South Wairapa Biodiversity Group. Can we put the, that, that discussion as general business? I suppose we can. Can we add that, Steph? Or? So there is no general business section, but if there's no decision to be made, which it sounds like there's not, it can be added as a minor item and perhaps just um, add that onto your um, members report, Claire. Um, that you've already got to the agenda, so it could be discussed yeah. then. Awesome, thank you. Um, no other apologies? Nobody's, hit, we're not sure whether Russell was going to be, oh, sorry, there he is down here. Hey, kia ora, Russell. Um, awesome. No other, no other apologies. No. All right. We'll move forward. No conflicts of interest to declare for the guards of items on the agenda, uh, including grant applications. But I don't think we've got any grant applications tonight, Steph. I was just going to say, um, we'll just need to move and second on those apologies. They haven't been um, formally. Oh, sorry. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll move that, that apology from uh, Ross be accepted. Do we have a second on that, please? I'll second that. Garrett, thank you. Okay. Oh, Garrett, all those in favour of. Aye. 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 Those against. <coughs> no against. That's moved. Thank you. Uh, we have, do we have no conflicts of interest? No. No. We don't have to move on that, do we, Steph? That deal's done? No. Any acknowledgements or tributes? Uh, anyone would like to make? Yes, Mr. Skippage died. I'd just like to um, just say he was a big member of the Featherston community and we offer condolences to his family. Is that, is that John Clare? John Skippage, yeah. Okay, we'll just make a note of that, please, Steph. Thank you. So public participation, we don't have any public participation tonight. Uh, so no actions from that. Uh, community board minutes from the last meeting on the 10th of August. Do we have a mover that the minutes of the 10th of August um, be confirmed true and correct? Have a mover on that? I'll move that. Clear, thank you. A seconder, Garrett, thank you. All those in favour, raise your hand or aye. Aye. Those against? Motion carried, thank you. Um, can we, everyone, we, we can't, do we speak to that now, Steve? 
if anyone's got anything. What's that, sorry? Anyone want to bring up anything from those minutes? They're all happy with those? Just no, they are correct. correct. Yeah, sorry. Yes, that's right. Um, so uh, the officers, oh, we were going to have Joe Dean speaking, but she's put in an apology as well. Sorry. Uh, maybe uh, we should. We should have. Apologies to that matter, Steph. We just make a note of it in the minutes, but we don't need to accept those because she's not a member of the board. Okay, so Joe Dean was going to be speaking to us about waste and events, but um, she's unable to make it tonight. Uh, moving to 9.1 on the officer's report. Just uh, have a look at that. Uh, so pages 5 to 51, 5, sorry, 5 to 41. Do we have a move to receive the officer's report? I'll do Jason, that. Jason, thank you. Sorry, do you want to second that, Claire? Yeah, I'll second that. Second to clear. All those in favour, say aye or raise your hands. Aye. <clears throat> those against, please say no or raise your hand. No, motion's carried. Thank you. Any questions or clarification on that? Anything in that report? I did find something. I haven't got it in hard copy, so I have to scroll through. Sorry. Um, there was something... Um, yes, uh, just looking at page six, the legislative changes to the RMA and the Strategic Planning Act, um, I think we need to be really, really involved in the spatial plan as it comes up. And I'd like to know how, um, uh, I'd like to ask the mayor or the deputy mayor if what is the story with the spatial plan in relationship to the RMA and the spatial plan that we are in Featherstone to be looking at? Um, the, um, well, possibly actually Russell might be able to do this, but the spatial plan uh, from our perspective is merely a guide uh, for the future implementation of the district plan. Uh, however, the RMA being government legislation will take precedence and any spatial plan uh, will need to then refer back to the RMA with regards to its applicability for our district. Would that be a fair comment, Russell? Yeah. Yes, that, that's uh, relevant wording there um, and thoughts. Um, it's a non-statutory document, just following on from Alex's given an overview on. It's a non-statutory document, but it is strategically important, uh, both in terms of bringing key strategy and focus into what's important, what, what should be protected, what um, growth areas uh, we need to be looking at and decide upon. Uh, that's an upcoming decision for council. Council have, have already given officers um, uh, somewhat of guidance on it, so we need to come back to uh, councillors um, at the end of roughly around the end of this month with some recommendations it could be early November um, of what we believe is suitable in terms of the growth areas. Remember that the, the, the spatial plan in terms of componentry has the overall spatial plan map um, it has the uh, strategic drivers which is the diagram accompanying it and then we're also looking at um, our focus at this point is residential um, and residential growth provisioning. So, uh, and again, um, the expectation through the RMA and changes through the RMA is that greater, greater weight is given and thinking is put into um, responding to strategic um, planning and stra strategic planning outcomes. Um, in terms of part, linkage, linkage to Featherstone community, there was an earlier study done that's been raised to our attention um, of a, I'm trying to think of the title of it, um, uh, it was like a case study of, of Featherstone, which we've got a springboard from, uh, from that. But in terms of Featherstone specifically, uh, a signal forward is along these lines. 
uh, that we have to do master planning for Featherston because Featherston is identified as a growth node. Um, uh, uh, both for, in terms of our spatial plan thinking, but also for the uh, Wellington Regional Growth Framework, uh, where their framework is based on um, critically based around uh, transportation, uh, uh, train travel route for future growth. So we will be doing master planning um, later later in the year um, and into next year. Um, for it. So there'll be opportunity for, certainly for um, uh, Featherston Community Board to um, give us information and to liaise, and for us to liaise with the Community Board. Um, and anything else, I can, I can respond to questions. Mr Chairman, could I ask the question about the master plan? Um, I like the idea but I'm wondering about the extent to which the investigation work and the study uh, affects the drafting of the plan and to what extent there would be opportunity for appropriate community participation in that, that process. Is that possible? Sorry, I was a muted. Um, yeah, I, I guess what we're looking at is moving forward. You're talking about where, how much community. Uh, sorry, how much um, involvement the communities are going to have in that, Mike? Yes. Yep. Is that what you were saying there, Russell? Is it looking forward? You are look. They are looking that the community communities are going to be involved more. Yes, in terms uh, in terms of Mike's relevant question. Um, so our first mission is offices to um, uh, present a recommendation report for councillors uh, and recheck our thinking and for councillors give uh, to give direction and confirmation of, of the growth areas and um, also make any other comment in terms of the spatial plan itself. And then we'll take it out um, because what has been taken out to date, to date is a discussion document what we need to do is finalise it and take it out to the community for community input. Um, so we've got to keep our ears open for, for further feedback. And as part of that, we'll be having um, some town uh, community meetings in, in each of the town to retest our thinking and to uh, sit there and receive feedback upon it and before it's finalised. And the other component, is the more in-depth um, master plan work, which will be into the future, we, we would also work with the community on that and um, uh, a mix of officer input. Uh, so it's like a case study of Featherston, uh, master planning all the, all the potential for Featherston, um, working with consultants, off, internal officers and in planning and also the community and, and uh, um, any stakeholders that we we think are suitable. So there's there's a mix of stuff coming forward. Okay, thanks, Russell. Does that answer your question, Mike? I think so. Uh, I was wondering, does the master plan uh, envisage just the urban area of Featherston, or are we looking at Featherston in a wider sense? I'm conscious of the sheer size of the ward and the interlinking uh, that goes on in the ward, in other words, the interdependency of some of the smaller components quite close to Featherston and the extent to which they may be affected by the plan. Uh, presumably, the, the process that we involve the public in, in the broader sense, will enable us to make sure that we don't slip up on something which is likely to affect a, well, a relatively close rural component of the ward mm. uh, and the short answer to that is that it will have an urban focus however I I can I hear your con your concern in terms of um, uh, potent potential short-sightedness and and the importance of looking at rural connection and and eg um, Tahira Nikau, for example so um, but essentially a master plan is an urban focus. There's opportunity there to look at residential and any um, 
um, commercial commercial use or mixed use within within uh, solutions that are, are compiled. But essentially, it, it will be an urban focus. So, just one last question then: the actual South Wairapa spatial plan would it have as an annex to that plan the master plan for Featherstone? The master. The master plan will be a follow-on implementation component of the spatial plan. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can I just Clear. ask a question, please, through the chair? Um, I'm, I'm aware that we are a growth node, and in the early strategic plan discussion, um, consultation or engagement, um, we were going to be going out through sort of out, out the back through Longwood Road. There was sort of thought of an urban development out that way. My, what I would like to understand is, are the staff and councillors looking at the uh, Featherston wastewater 116 hectares that was bought um, to buy back or, or, or repurpose so that it becomes urban development growth node. Uh, the reason I say this is I, I, I just am not quite sure because it follows on to the wastewater, uh, three waters, the, the new um, four or five uh, water body kind of consultation and the assets that are involved that we have to say are involved with our wastewater system. Are we going to be able to repurpose that land, say for our strategic plan and for the urban growth node, rather than use it as an asset to give to one of these three water systems? Sorry, Russell, it sounds, I'm sort of trying to work out how we as Featherstone can ensure that that land is protected from effluent disposal and actually repurposed into maybe our urban growth development. And I'll, I'll, I'll give a, a brief answer to that and the mayor might, might wish to follow up in terms of, so you've, you've got good context. Um, so essentially the um, land use for dispersal purposes for Featherstone wastewater and and the relative merits of its future or not, that's a decision for the council, uh, the wise heads around the council table to, to make best use for future assets and the, and the options for that land. So that's an asset, asset based and, and uh, council de decision that sits outside um, the spatial plan work, but not not totally unrelated because uh, uh, good planning is that mix of uh, planning for use of land and infrastructure provisioning and locations of your in infrastructure provisioning. Uh, yeah, and, and to um, add to that, uh, you know, it's not a matter that has yet been considered by council. We're still waiting on any three waters details with regards to the risk associated with that bit of land. Uh, I don't know whether it necessarily fits in with the public consultation on the spatial plan. Uh, so there's a lot of unknowns. Uh, and when they come up, you'll be well and truly informed and be involved in the conversation uh, regarding that land. Yeah, so we really, we, you know, I think you're probably about six months to a year too early on that question, um, Claire, well, but I, I think it's good to raise it early. Uh, I, uh, I, I believe... I believe we, you have to put in though to this big body all the asset war, um, assets that you own. Yeah. And if this land is included in that assets, you may not be able to get it back. It's so I think we need to consider it before it is inserted into the asset Indeed. of waste. Again, you're a bit early because we've just asked for clarification as to the way these future potential entities will look at land and the ownership and how that's transferred. So we don't have an answer yet. 
uh, on how the government's proposing to do that. So when we do know what the actual plan is, if and when this goes ahead, then we can react. I, I, I was aware that of the meeting that we had with the Three Waters, that question was asked and they said that those that land would be included. No, they're, they're, I, I correct you on that one. The initial outline looks like it might, was the reply. Uh, however, there has been no determination as to the actual uh, uh, role or how that will be treated. And until we do, we're just guessing. And so say it was included, is there any way we can repurpose it before we submit that stuff? Because I want that to be taken out of our waste water and, and put into our spatial plan growth node. Yeah. And I think we need to wait, we need to do that before we wait for that decision. Yeah, and we and we could probably spend two hours um, uh, talking about what it's. However, we will it, when there is a determination, and if Three Waters goes ahead, then we will have until twenty twenty four to make sure that we have positioned our assets correctly to ensure that they are the, to the best value of the ratepayers and the people of Fenston. Thank you. Uh, so, just one other thing. When is the uh, consultation going to start again for the Featherstone Wastewater? Um, I'm sorry, I'm unable to, con I'm, uh, I'm not sure on that one. I don't know if, um, for Russell, you have any idea uh, as, as to that? Uh, we have got it. I think there's a number of people working furiously on that, but we haven't heard back. So actually, we don't know. No, uh, correct. I, I haven't heard anything more internally um, in terms of information coming out of Wellington Water or, or other sources. So we're, it's unfortunately, it's a wait and see and, until you hear more. Yeah, it was just that you said that it was delayed, the engagement was delayed because... Uh, in our action points because of the long-term plan. Now that's out of the way. And we just would like to, I just was interested in what was the progress in that. Thank and you. We'll let you know as soon as we, we know. Sorry, any other questions on 9.1? No, we'll move forward to 9.2 actions items report, pages 42 to 47. Uh, where are we? Right, we've got a couple of things uh, in line here. One is the investigated solution to the welcome to Featherson signs. Now, I've spoken with, uh, with um, Rhonda Jones, and it turns out that the budget has been agreed to. Uh, these been, uh, quotes have been um, received and accepted, I understand, from Council. Um, and we're waiting now for um, some sort of bracket system that NZTA, I think, have to approve. Um, and I haven't, I haven't got the latest, uh, but from what I understand with Rhonda is that um, uh, it's just being finalised for what these brackets are. And Harry was going to do a report as to what was being done with that, because I mean, it's coming up just over 18 months, I think it is, since they were taken out. So uh, unless anyone's got any other um, more up-to-date news on that, you haven't heard anything, Russell? Oh, sorry, nothing further to add to that. Yeah, okay, it's, um, and I can't, I can't, I, I, yeah, I'm not 100% sure what the brackets are. I think it was something to do with uh, the rocks or the or the masonry work splitting because of movement with the post. There was some sort of bracket that was going to be put in place uh, so that that didn't happen. Uh, but that had nothing to do with uh, and, w and wouldn't reflect on any sort of frangible um, uh, basis for the sign. So um, hopefully... Um, and I can't remember, sorry, the, the guy uh, or, the, or whoever's taken over from Ewan has now got this on their desk to, um, to look at. Hopefully it's all pretty straightforward.
and will happen. Um, the second one on there is the presented proposal to have a Māori name featured in as Paita Mokai and a Po carving to the Māori Standing Committee. So we were presented to the Māori Standing Committee on the 3rd of August. Um, they, um, uh, Andrea uh, Rimini and um, Karen McCarty come out to our site at Farham House uh, Sunday, just gone, to have a look at the Po. They're now going to go back to the Mary Standing Committee and via email, they weren't going to wait for the next meeting, they're going to do it via email, put through their um, recommendations and thoughts on things there, and then hopefully we'll get some sort of answer from um, uh, Mary Standing Committee uh, about that. Um, I think there was a little bit of confusion. Um, the proposal that we set forward and, and actually presented was a 12 pages. There was actually two parts to it. One was about the PO, and the second part was about the um, the um, the second name of Paitamoko being um, through Lynn's being put to Featherston, and um, because people were saying, "Oh, what's that about?" And so I don't know how well it was actually read, but it was. Um, there's actually two parts to it, so they're hopefully going to look at that at the same time. Uh, uh, the other one in there is coordinate with the RSA and the 28th Mary Battalion Association on flags for new, uh, next year. I've spoken with um, Peter Jackson. Uh, so him and I and we'll get, um, um, well, not necessarily me, but the community board and the RSA and um, Dick Smith and whoever else may want to be involved will sit down um, in the near future and, um, and work through what we're looking at or what, people would like to see with the flags. Um, um, Peter made a good point that Mary Battalion is a, um, a sort of one figure, I suppose. Uh, so there could be others that also want to be involved with it. So um, I don't know, Steph, whether we can actually um, action this as to um, that we, we are in the process of coordinating with the RSA and the, and the Mary Battalion and anybody else really that wants to um, be involved with that. That. So you wanted, um, sorry, was that to change that to action because it's been sort of in progress carried out? Yeah, well, I mean, the action, yeah. yeah, the action um, task is to coordinate with the RSA and the 28th Mary Battalion Association on flags for next year. We'll say we are doing that and it's going to be yeah. an ongoing, so it's not ongoing necessarily thing. we can make a decision and that's what we're going to do. Yeah, no, we can note that. Uh, um, that, that you sent through, Steph. Um, oh, yes. Was that in the action points about the, uh, the the cats going to the library? Yep, that's on. That's that's at the very bottom there. Discuss going thirds with two community boards for home health assessment kids. It's at the bottom of page 44. Okay, I spoke to, um, well, I haven't, sorry, I haven't spoken. I've got an email from um, Annette Beatty from the libraries because I just wanted to make, just out of interest, find out how many, um, how many, how many of those kits in Greytown. Um, and she's come back saying that they've been used five times, I think. One of them is actually, um, sorry, I'm just trying to find it here. Um, one's actually been damaged and they're just getting it repaired. Uh, the two kits have been used three times in total. We have three people waiting to use and we currently have one kit unavailable because the kit is being repaired. Um, so I was actually just going to ring here because she made a comment uh, in here about uh, the, the, I don't know how big, these kits are. Do you know how big they are, Alex? Physically, how big they are? Yeah, I suppose if you think about a um, a, a, a large, a, sort of a briefcase or oh, a large okay. camera case. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. put um, on the seat next to you. It's not too big. Oh, because you were saying space is a major consideration as to where the items are homed. As you know, Feathers and Library is extremely limited. Yeah, I'd be surprised. They're pretty tiny. 
Yeah, uh, okay, that's, you know, that's a size. But then the Featherston Library does have a lot of space issues. I can see how, yeah. Yeah, but it could be housed, uh, I suppose, somewhere within their purview, or they could order it and it could be dropped off at the library for, for pickup. Yeah, because yeah. there are books yeah. constantly going backwards and forwards. So. Okay, so I guess well, just the moving. information centre could hold it. Yeah, mm. yeah. And, and, and there's a number of with access through to the information centre if someone needed it. Yeah, and they went open. I guess just moving forward on that, Steph, we just need to um, to, to speak with the other two chairs as to whether they're happy to go thirds. Um, and that's how we um, just shelve that for the moment and then we'll get hold of yeah. them and find out. Or, or you just say, look, we want one for Featherston to remain in Featherston and we'll punt up the $300. I mean, they're pretty cheap. Yeah, I mean, what's your they thoughts don't on that? Out of date, it's not like they're electronic. So, yeah, I think there'd be value in them. Okay, so there's one already in Greytown. Does Martin Feathers? Uh, sorry, um, Martin Borough. Does anyone know if, they, if there's been? They don't have one either. No, they don't have one. But has anybody used it over there? Um, well, they don't have one. So, uh, if the one in Greytown's been used three or five times. Then that's that's the one for the South Wairapa. Yeah, yeah. So there's it's what she's saying here. It's once uh, the borough, once for Featherston borough, as the Greytown one's already been used. Yeah, that's what we need to. We only have so one. We'll just talk to them over the next, next yeah. few days. Yeah. Okay, so I'll talk to those other two and see if we want to buy another two, I suppose, isn't it? Divided by the three of us. Yeah, one each. Yeah. Okay. So, um, to have a movie to receive that action report. I'm having a uh, Jason seconder on that. I'll do that. Clear. Thank you. All those in favor, aye or raise your hand. Aye. Say no. Motion's carried. Thank you. Um, so we've done the updates on that already. Uh, income and expenditure report um, 48 to 51. Do we have any questions on this? Are you going to refer, sorry, are you going to refer back to that Wellington Water letter? Uh, which one was that? That okay, is on page 46. 46. Out. I want to make the point there oh. for those who are watching that in fact this was addressed to the uh, not to the council, it's been addressed to the stakeholders. So if you see who it's gone out to, it's not actually been sent to council or sent to community board. So it's, an, it's a four year information basically, and the action's going forward from Wellington Water. So uh, ties in with what Alex and, and uh, Russell are saying. If you read the letter, can can we ask what are the council viable options that they are considering? Could you tell me um, where that figure is? Um, sorry, I lost track there. Uh, next steps, page 46, from oh. a letter from... Um, Linda Fairbrother, it says, we are now working with council to confirm viable options. Yeah. I'm just wondering if it would be possible um, if the if you could advise us what the viable options are. Yep, yeah. no, I'm sorry, I can't do that. But that will become, I, I may think, when a report comes through on that, then, then that will be um, uh, made available. But I can't... Um, uh, I, I, I can't remember, but B, I haven't got it in front of me, but also that's part of a different process that's going on. Okay, so can I also then say uh, two things? Who is or who are the councillors involved with working on these viable options? And secondly, can we say that one of the viable options, which is wastewater to land, will not be considered? Uh, I think it's uh, a full council, uh, and I, again, I'll repeat, can't actually uh, uh, divulge or remember, 
uh, what uh, what the outcome of the uh, I, what I can look up what the outcome of the workshop was, but that's a different process. Clear. Okay, thank you. And and the councillors have been mindful of uh, trying to get a, a suitable outcome and have posed back uh, good questioning to Wellington Water in terms of bringing forward more information for the councillors to consider further um, and. You. Within that, within that topic, it's um, um, the, the scale of the option and the cost of the option. So the councillors will have some fresh thinking to do and they're, they're mindful of that. And they've already given that input into uh, Wellington Water to frame Wellington Water's thinking and Wellington Water's response back to council. And so you can say, so can I say, Within that framework, you can guarantee that we are not going to have wastewater to land. My previous comment um, uh, continues that we can't state that at all until the contents of, of the report um, are made uh, public. So I, I, I'm not. I'm not going to let you put words in my mouth, clear. Great. You're right with that, Garrett. Yeah, I, I, to, yes, to, I agree with Alex. The, the process is ongoing, and my point would be that there, there was a the, all the councils are involved if, from August, and we are still waiting for feedback from uh, Wellington Water Limited. So we we'll move on to the income and expenditure report nine point three forty eight to fifty one. Uh, any questions or clarification you'd like to ask about that? Yes, just what is the red 2,369 2, operating expenses? Has that Does that mean we've gone over our that's budget? Fine. Sorry, that's on page 50. 50 There's yeah. two yeah. red lines. Oh, I've just got a hard copy. It's not in red. Sorry, Claire. Which, which, um... uh, uh, if you have a look, it's got... Personal and operating costs. If you keep going down, it's got total operating expenses to August. Yep. Two, three, and six, then, nine, twelve. Yes, that's in that's highlighted in red. Okay, that's. I can take that back as a query if you like, Claire. It doesn't. It does look like you've got a surplus there, not a deficit. So um, I can just get some clarification on why that's in red. And, no, and no, you're, you're right, Claire. It is over expense. If you go back and look at the traffic management, for example, the the, the estimate was was six hundred, and it cost six ninety two. So we're ninety two dollars over. Uh, have has anybody else got an electronic copy? There are there, uh, the total grants paid out at the very end is eight thousand. Four hundred and eighty-three oh seven. Okay. However, it does that um, does that mean in red that it's a deficit or a in credit? I, I I think the red is misleading. Looking at it, that it's purely just a formatting error as opposed to uh, saying. I think if it was negative, it'd be in brackets. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm trying to say, yeah. is it in brackets or okay. is it red because it's something we need to be careful of? That's all. It's a subtitle. Yeah, if you Sometimes. go up to the, to the top of that traffic management that Garrick spoke about, clear. See the 9239s in brackets? That's yeah, no, no, I, I can see that. And I just, just, that's in red and in brackets. But for what I've got is, uh, total income is there's no red, there's nothing, it's in black, just yeah. back bold. However, on my thing, under the total grants and the total operating expenses, uh, they're in red, yet all the other ones aren't colored at all. They're in black bold. These are bold red, and I just wondered what that was supposed to um, mean. That was all. Okay, are you just able to clarify that, Steph? Just check on that. Just to maybe it was a. 
Okay. Um, so I'd have a mover to accept. Any other questions on that? No, do I have a mover to accept that report? Yep, I'll Clear. move that. Thank you. Second to Jason. Thank you. All those in favour, either raise your hands or aye. Aye. Thank you. Those against, no. Thank you. Motion carried on that. Uh, financial assistance report 9.4, 52.53. I think it's 8.4, isn't it? No, that was 9.3. We're on 9.4. Sorry, agenda item 8.4, it's gone. Oh, okay. That's... No. Oh, it has two. Okay. I, I'm sorry, I'm just... It's, I'm just... That's the financial assistance report? Yeah, yeah. It has two. Is the other one 9.3? Yeah, it's just a... Oh no, the others are eight point three as well. Eight point three, eight point four. One ahead on the. I'm I'm one ahead on this. Sorry, it's all right. <laughs> um, where are we? Um, so eight point four. Do you have a mover to receive that? Yep. Clear. Thank you. Second, that Garrick. Thank you. All those in favour, aye or raise your hand. Aye. Thank you. All those against, say no. Motion's carried. Thank you. <laughs> Um, any questions on that? Anyone wants to? Nothing on that. So we have a move to note that an ineligible grant application was received from Digital Seniors as the applicant received funding from NWDC and Youth Fund. Some of the grounds they have may not be a receipt of any other council. Ah, oh, so they put a grant through for us. They put a request in. Is that right? And but they'd already received yep. uh, funding from from council. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do I have a mover to note that an ineligible grant application was received from Digital Seniors as the as the applicant received funding from the SWDC community <laughs> and Youth Fund? I have a mover to accept that. I'm happy yep. to read that. Second, seconder on that, clear, thank you. Those in favour, aye or raise your hand. Those against. Did you, which way did you want to go on aye. that, Mike? Sorry. Aye, sorry, I. yep. And uh, those against, say no or raise your hand. Motion, thank you, Kerry, thank you. Right, so we're on two, five, nine point one. Notice of motion clear to speak to motion, motion and have you put forward the following. So clear, would you like to read that out? Oh yes. Um, I, Claire Bleakley, move that the Featherston Community Board receive this information of the motion and I ask that the, uh, the Featherston Community Board hosts the Grey Town and Martinborough Community Boards for a meeting to discuss the Hammond Robertson Report and the recommendation to develop community plans, look at the capability of community boards and to adopt a community board charter. Uh, and the reason I ask that um, is that uh, as community boards, we are probably the, the grassroots voice for the people within our community. And we need to empower communities so that they can set out clear direction to voice the people's concerns. It is important that the community boards work together on each of their different challenges that are specific in their communities. In the last few months, there has been little consultation between the South Wairarapa District Council and community boards, and this needs to be strengthened. This workshop would bring together the South Wairarapa community boards to work on specific points raised in the Hammond Robertson Community Board Survey Report of 2018. 
this report is a way forward. It will empower community boards to be given the recognition and support capability so they can identify the challenges and benefits of their communities and find support for them. The Hammond Robertson Report of 2018 made specific recommendations, specifically uh, recommendation three, four, five, as outlined below. Recommendation three, that the community board adopt board charters. Every community board should have a formal board charter with their council, which clarifies a role, scope, delegations, and how the council and staff will relate to the boards and how the boards relate to the council. This charter is to be developed through a conversation of equals between the council and the boards in each area. This is directly from the Hammett Robertson report. The recommendation number four, council recognize and support the capability of community boards. Council recognize that democracy in place shaping is more resilient when they empower boards to take local leadership of local affairs and decisions. Councils must actively build the capability of boards in local place shaping. And recommendation five, community boards develop community plans. The community boards each develop an inclusive and engaging community plan with a small number of priorities, which drive the board itself. The role of a board be reshaped to delivering these priorities in the community plan. The boards not, boards not develop strategies and priorities which are not related to the priorities of their communities. Community boards to empower the community need to know what is going on. The responsibility of the council to community boards is this engagement. For this, we need to develop a scope role and accountability charter that sets out the role of the community boards so that we can work collaboratively and collectively so that we can look at the benefits and challenges each one of our individual communities is faced with. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Sorry, Mr. Chairman, I, I have, uh, I wish to support and to second the motion uh, from Claire. Uh, I think most of you are aware that um, I have strong feelings about communities. Uh, absolutely certain that with the turmoil going on right now at a government level of the future of councils, uh, whether it's the three waters issue whether it's the uh, review of local government, or in fact, for that matter, the other issue is the reform of <clears throat> DHBs. Um, my concern is that a loser in all of these things will be our communities. And I can only say that from my experience, going right back to the establishment of the South Warrapa District Council in um, 1989, uh, the reasons that the uh, we have community boards was largely down to the fact that the four uh, key people in that uh, amalgamation process, the three borough mayors of Featherston, Greytown, Martinborough, and the county chairman made it very clear to Mr. Elwood, who was the local government commissioner, that they were very concerned that his way in which he was proposing to create these new entities was going to uh, do great disservice to those communities. Specifically, they were concerned about the identity of the communities. That's an important issue, if only for the reason that one of the uh, things which we take pride in is our uh, destination status. We do not want them all to be the same. They are different and that's one of our great strengths. So identity and the retention of the identity is very much a reflection of the community. The second element that those four wise gentlemen uh, put to Mr. Elwood had to do with representation. When you considered that the three boroughs and the county had more 
more representatives than we've got today by a long, long way, including the community boards. Uh, their concerns are being mirrored in some of the problems we're facing now. So uh, representation does become important. Allied with that was a, the serious concern that communication could be impacted in a big way, that the voice, the, the fourth factor in their argument, would be diminished considerably by not having some form of representation at a, at a, at a community level. So I totally support what Claire has uh, put in front of the board tonight, um, and uh, I'll leave it there for the moment. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike um, and Claire. Um, so can I just get clarification on that, Claire? What you're asking is that we host a meeting between the three, three community boards um, to just discuss these options and to look at the, um, the possibility of the capability of community boards and adopt a community board charter. So that would be just a discussion around that at that time? I, I, would, I would look, yes, as an ongoing going thing. So the outcome would be that we would have all of this in place. I'm... I'm really concerned with the Local Government Act and the kind of loss of democracy of the grassroots people's voice and where a community board needs to sit. And I think okay. the more government is centralised, the more important community boards become for the voice of their communities. So I would love to see a very strong charter um, um, community plan, um, which we three boards, because we work well together, um, all can work off and preserve our identity. And as Mike said, um, the, 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 the people's voice is heard and empowered through that. All right, thanks, Claire. Um, any other, any other discussion? Yep, Garrick. Yeah, just, just a couple of questions. Um, is there any cost involved in this, Claire, you know, in terms of budgeting for it? And my other concern is uh, looking at uh, Ross's departure. It, what time scale are you working on, uh, recognising that um, uh, what we're in October now? Well, if, if, we, can, if we can host this meeting, I guess the um, the use of the room where we would host this meeting and the AV and all the uh, equipment needed maybe to to um, either the Zoom meeting or the equipment we'd need to present the information from the Hammond-Robertson report. Um, we would ask council if we could possibly have that as part of our community. So there's, I don't know what the cost of that would be. And then we need to start putting together the, the charter and stuff like that. I don't really see a heavy cost in any of that. Um, but as I say, uh, what we can do is we can, I think all the community boards when they are first, um, when we first sit down, we put together a strategic plan for our communities and, and things like that. I'm just saying that I am, I've had a lot of people really, really concerned and um, about the way the, that we have not consulted with them over the council stuff. And I'm saying we haven't been told about it. So we need to have something very, very clearly put. And I do know it comes up almost at every meeting. Would the council please advise us what it is that you are doing so that if it is going to be important for the, say, the Featherston community, we can actually be that conduit to, to the community to at least have a meeting or something like that. I think the rates thing is the biggest one where our, our, our board chair did ask for a meeting when this first exploded well, and nobody right. could do anything. So what I'm saying is, is we need to actually have very clear guidelines about we, what we as a Featherston community board see in relationship to this report. So, 
Sorry, Claire. Um, what are you actually seeing as this meeting? What are you What are you seeing as involved with this? Is this the three boards just getting together and? and I think at the beginning, it it's the three boards. But each yeah. one of us, we need to discuss um, these three points specifically, and then work oh. on how we work it together. How we move it forward. So no, I'm yeah. not expecting us to sort of sit down and write a charter at our first yeah. meeting. Okay. Um, sorry, Garrick, what, um, and I can understand. I'm concerned about time, time scale, yeah. if we're still one person down, if we're going to go ahead with this, um, and uh, whether the other boards are on the same uh, level well, as that, we are, that's all. That's what we discuss. I mean, as, as it is, Ross hasn't, hasn't been to any of our meetings in the last six lots, uh, last six meetings. So, I mean, that, I don't think that actually makes any difference. Um, and in those last six meetings, there's actually only ever put two apologies in, and the second one came in today. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I, I would actually envisage that uh, at this stage, the community board that was elected as community board would would meet and, and do this. And then later on, we'd bring our represented councillors onto it. I would not necessarily expect the councillors to be involved in these meetings straight away. I think clarification on the whole, um, the charter process, I suppose, and what that involved would be, would be a good start, Claire. So, I mean, obviously um, you've moved that. Uh, Mike has seconded that. Um, if there's no other questions or concerns about that. Um, so, You've seconded there, Mike. All those in favour, oh, that say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Those against, say no or raise your hand. Okay, motion's carried. Thank you. Okay, so we've got the chair report. Uh, what are we, 56 to 58? Uh, so we had a couple of things on here. Um, where are we? Uh, so I have a mover to receive that report. Yep. Jason, thank you. A seconder. Yep. Clear. Thank you. Raise your hands. Those against say no. Sorry, a little bit of hit himself. Those in favour, those against, say no. Motion's carried, thank you. Um, so I have a, a recommend to the council to hold a public meeting. So I put up, I, I emailed um, Harry on two occasions prior to the um, public meeting. Um, and then um, it was requested um, for, a, for a meeting on two occasions. But as we hadn't gone through the process of... Um, moving at a, at a meeting, that's what I'm doing tonight. So I have a mover to re recommend to the council that I hold a public meeting on rates in Featherston. I'm happy to move that. I'll second that. a second for that? Yes. Clear, thank you. All those in favour say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Those against, raise your hand or say no. Motion's carried, thank you. Um, so I have a mover to accept the quotes. Now, sent the quotes, did you guys receive those today? I only yeah. received them late yesterday or early this morning. I've actually spoken to Chris. Uh, sorry, I can't remember his surname. Sutton. Uh, sorry, I can't remember his surname. About the flag tracks. Now, the repair bill for the flag tracks is $3,200 and uh, something dollars. And I questioned them about it. There's six flag tracks need repaired. Now, five of those have been twisted in the wind. And the reason that they've twisted is because they weren't actually installed properly in the first place. But unfortunately, the installer of them has now gone bust. So it's on us to get them repaired. The sixth one has been hit by a truck um, or a, or a high-sided vehicle. Um, so the bottom part of it actually needs to be replaced. Now, the, the problem they've got is obviously because it's on a state highway, they've got to do um, traffic management and they've been quoted um, uh, all up 
of six hours of traffic management. So I've put him on to Peter, um, who's the local guy here in Featherston, um, and he's going to try and negotiate a cheaper deal. Um, on top of that, while, it, while, while we were looking at um, seeing which ones needed to be repaired, I says to him, while you've got the cherry picker and, or while you've got all your gear down here in the traffic management, can you give us another quote just so we've got it there about getting some more flags on the other side of the road? So which he has done that. So to install five new flag tracks and repair the six existing flag tracks, we're looking at over $8,000 plus GST. And I said, that's, that's really up there. Um, and what gets me is the 3,200, and I don't know whether I'm just being miserable, but to me, if they were installed properly in the first place, and he said this, they would need repairing, except for that one that's been hit. So um, I, I um, apologise, um, Steph. I mean, we're putting here that we were going to um, move on accepting that quote. I'd like to chat, to amend that, to discuss it, and we will defer it um, because it's a lot of money um, and unfortunately, the guy from um, uh, what's he from? Power Construction, who first installed them, the business is no longer. So we've got no comeback at all. Um, Mark, that's Bryce here. Yeah, Bryce. Right. Yeah, I'll yeah, give you. I looked into it after you spoke to me today, just to oh, give you cool. some insight. So what happened was we got a quote. Well, Featherston Community Board did get an original quote from Chris. And there was some people on the on the community board who thought it was quite high, and they knew another company called Power Services, yep. and got them to quote it. And obviously, this is where it's ended up. All right. So that oh, was that's the original one. Yep. So oh, this is how it's ended yep. up in this situation. It was decided by the community board to use this other company, and okay. and it's um, obviously it's failed because they're not used to installing flag tracks. Yeah. And, and now they've gone belly up. So just, I looked into it after you called me today. Okay. Oh, cool. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So that's just confirmed. We've got no comeback. Um, and if we want to, um, to, to correct them, um, it's going to cost us 3,200 and whatever it is at the moment, unless we can get a cheaper um, traffic management plan. Um, what concerns me is that's, that's six of 15 so there is another nine that, to me, could possibly do the same thing. Um, so, yeah, look, I think we just need to discuss it a bit more um, about whether we, what we do at the moment. Um, is everyone happy to defer this at, at, at the moment? Or anyone got any thoughts? Or Would it be possible maybe to put this into a workshop? And just look at it, um, I would prefer to workshop this, put this down as an item in a workshop. Yep. Uh, because I think there are some other discussions that could be had with this. Yep, we can do that, absolutely. Um, just, just to clarify, I was speaking with, um, with the guy was, um, who, who is installing them, what it seems to be is that there's a, there's a metal ring goes around the post. There's a, a rubber insert that goes between the post and the, and the ring that wasn't put in some of these. Uh, um, and there should have also a metal screw that goes through the back of the bracket and into the lamppost to stop it actually twisting. And that also mm. wasn't put in there. So that's all they're going to be, literally be doing. But they allow about half an hour because they, they literally strip it down and, and put these things in and put them back up again. So they reinstall them. So they do it properly. But as I say, um, six out of the existing 15 are going to get done. So the other nine could possibly, um, it could happen to those. So, yeah. So when you did the quote, did you actually ask oh, no, sorry, them? Sorry, clear. Oh. Sorry. No. I was just going to say, um, Garrett, did is, was there any other third parties we could be involved with? I mean, I'm taking on board your comments, Mark. That you know, it's not just it's not just the um, uh, the community board looking at using these things, and there may be other third parties because it seems a lot of money just being spent on traffic control. Um, and if there's something else we can do at the same time, but I, I think we should actually it needs more thought. You know, eight grand, and we don't really know if we're going to get end up with a product we want at the end. No, it's um, it's yeah. 
it's 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 obviously something we need to sit down and discuss about how we want to do it. Um, I know there is there there are um, organisation and groups coming on board to buy flags, but obviously the maintenance of the tracks is something we need to look at down the track. To excuse the pun. Um, agree, so. agree. Yeah, needs further discussion. Thank you. Mm. Claire, did you have something else? No, I, I was just, uh, I think we can bring that up at the meeting. I was just going to say, have you checked the nine that haven't broken to see if they have the same fault? Oh, they will do, I guarantee. I mean, sorry, when I say, hold on, they would have been, been installed the same way. If, if you imagine a metal ring going around the lamppost slide, there should be, um, and it's what, I, I was familiar with uh, what they call munzing rings. So it's a metal ring and then it has a rubber insulation sleeve inside it to stop them turning. Those rubber sleeves weren't put in there. They also have a screw go through the back of the bracket into the post to stop it, physically stop it turning. Um, for us to, um, and it's going to cost us 3200 to do six posts. So you imagine what it's going to cost to do 50. Okay, so um, yeah, I think I think at the moment, we're, if we're going to do any, we would look at doing the ones that need it. Um, well, I, I yeah, guess, except yeah. for the one that's been hit by a truck. Yeah, yeah. The, so I, think, the I think a workshop and a further discussion definitely a good idea. Thank you. Any other comments or, or concerns, questions? No. Okay. Uh, uh, can we? Um, can we just defer that step, or, or are we better? Yeah, you can defer it. I think because there is a recommendation already in your chair report, just for clarity in the minutes, it would be good to have the resolution just to defer it, just so that it's clear. Um, okay. So if you just move and second and call a vote on that, I think it'll be um, more clear okay, for the so report. I'm happy to move that we, we, we de defer that. Yeah. We have a Jason, thank you. All those in favour, aye or raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Thank you. All those against, sorry. All those against, no or raise your hand. Motion carried, thank you. Okay, uh, member report, clear. No, just I uh, just going back to your, to this, um, uh, I'm sorry, we haven't quite got through all of this. Sorry, I thought we were just going to talk you because you've got security cameras and three waters um what about oh, the sorry conflict? sorry sorry last weekend uh last thing we bought i brought up the conflict of interest i and i can't see in this minutes where they've been resolved or what is the outcome of that of me no of the uh i it was just that i think we put it through through you um, to, uh, about the conflict of interest that was raised at two meetings with council of the community board and its chair. Yeah. Um, and I haven't seen a resolution to that motion and I haven't received anything about the outcome of what that happened. There hasn't been one. I'm still waiting for it. Ah. Oh. So, um, that's now coming on four months since it was originally raised. Uh, one of the councillors has, um, uh, what was the wording? Do uh, reverse their decision, reverse their concern. Um, so I'm still waiting for a report from Kate to come out. Um, uh, yeah, so that's where it's at at the moment. I'm waiting um, for that. Thank you. Um, security cameras, yes. Yeah, so, so I've, um, we've, I, I, on a couple of occasions, as I say, I walked, with, walked the town with Jason from One Security in Carterton, and he's pointed out where he could put, um, or where he would suggest they put cameras um, to do it. I just haven't had a chance to actually go and talk to those, um, those building owners to ask if they would be happy for that to happen. If, uh, if and when I do that, um, and for that, that's when we would sit down and go, right, um, this is this is what was suggested. These 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 owners are happy for them to go in these buildings, and this is what the cost is going to be. Um, through um, 
DIA and Fab Fetty. Um, it was um, spoken about in the first place that that could be something that would be financed through them. Uh, and then obviously we've spoken in the past and Garrick brought up a point and it's something we've looked at with the Privacy Act and things like that. So all of those sort of things would be covered. All I want to find out is to come to the party and say, these are the cameras we'd look at. These are where they're going to go. The builders owners are happy for them to do it. Let's work from this. Otherwise, if we go back to front, we then go, yeah, that's a great idea, but nobody wants to put them on their building. So we're still that's still in progress um, to do that. Um, and then obviously the three water Zoom meeting. I mean, that was um, <laughs> that was pretty intense. And as we've spoken about on on numerous occasions, we don't really know what's happening. Um, so it's just a wait and see on a, on a lot of aspects of that um, as to what's going to be uh, put forward from that. So how many weeks are left on that, Alex? Are there um, of the eight weeks, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, so it was eight weeks. Now, <clears throat> there was a bit of confusion initially. The government wasn't going to give eight weeks uh, for councils to absorb the information. Then they said that eight weeks will be for you to consult. We said you're joking because we actually don't we don't know what the answers to all the questions are and how can you consult when you have a tenth of the information. Then they changed that eight weeks to an, a time for councils to consider where they had concerns and issues and to submit them to DIA. So that was done on Friday, which was the final day, along with all the other councils in New Zealand. And we're now, now waiting for a response from the DIA and the government on the next step to proceed, whether they're going to continue with their current timeline, uh, they're going to, uh, or they're going to react to the concerns of all 67 councils in the country, uh, and whether they're just going to mandate it and push it through by law. So uh, we'll wait and see. Okay. So any other questions on that report? Yeah, just quickly on that Three Waters report, um, I'm sorry, I must have missed it. Uh, are we able to see the quest, the qu uh, queries that council raised? Certainly, to um, but every uh, question and all the reports are on our website and have been for as, as soon as we started compiling. You know, for for quite some time. Thank you. Cool. No other questions. The paperwork here. So we'll go on to uh, Claire's report 59 to 62. To have a mover to receive that report, I'm happy to receive that. Seconder to receive that, Jason, thank you. All those in favour, aye or raise your hand. Aye. Those against, please say no or raise your hand. Motion carried. Thank you, Claire. Would you like to speak to that? Yeah, just, just to say. Um... We are still going ahead with our organic week, except we've extended it out now for the next two months. So um, every other weekend or many of the weekends, we are running activities. And the first uh, one is this Thursday, a little holiday program up at Ferrum House, part of the Creative Space uh, Initiative. Uh, and on Sunday, we are holding uh, Hugel, Mark, Hugel Culture Garden, uh, Paitomokai is holding that, um, Paitomokai or Tawida is holding that, um, just to showcase the Hugel culture and, and do a little bit of gardening and also have a great barbecue. Um, so the events are sort of happening throughout, throughout October and November. And I'd like to thank the community board for all the support they gave us and we are using the funding um, that was given and we will be fully accountable for that. But now that the, we would like to have a little bit of a reprieve, now that the program is going for three months, I'm not sure if after the event we were supposed to, within three months have given a report on how it went. We just to be aware that our report won't finish until December, so if we could, have a little bit of a reprieve to be able to put our report in after the events have finished. So that's one thing. Um, uh, I've been rung up quite a bit and talked to people in our community who 
are very concerned over the rates rise. And I know, um, Mark, that you have been dealing with this with, um, on behalf of the board on, for council. But um, I was, I, I would like to suggest that the comms that we have been approved, that extra funding, I feel at the time that it's come, it is inappropriate when we have so many people in our community who are suffering to actually take that rise. So I would like to suggest that um, the money that I would get from that may be put into a fund to help people pay the, um, the difficulty they're having with surviving or, or whatever. I'm not quite sure. I just would like to voice the concern that I don't think it is appropriate to have that kind of rise in this situation. Cool. Um, the I'd, Christmas. Sorry, sorry I'll just I'll speak to that, Claire. Um, I think I think that's something we could speak together as uh, three boards, or speak to as, certainly as 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 our board. Um, but I think it's it's. I don't know. I know the other two boards or members of the other two boards have also got the similar concerns. So that's something that we could speak to. Um, have discussions amongst ourselves on. Thank you. And Thank you. That. That's wonderful. Um, and also, I've been rung up by two people. Uh, apparently, there was a brass band that always came down and played at the parade. Uh, they've been they've booked us in, but we need to be able to confirm whether we believe the the um, parade can actually go ahead. I know that now we're allowed over 100 people as a community. Um, and what are the logistics? Because we've, we've, we've got to get our traffic management plan in and everything like that. So there is a lot of planning that needs to go ahead. Not so much. And just to tell people, yes, it's going ahead or no, it's not. Um, and I just need to know whether we... <laughs> make the call to defer it and make it a Easter parade or something like that because oh. of the um, uncertainty around numbers and, all, and congregation and all of that. So can we also put that to a meeting? Um, yeah, I think... I mean, that's that's always... That's going to be a hard one, um, Claire, unless, unless we get... Um, Ryan Tamaki on the organisational group, and we can just run it whenever we want to. Um, that's yeah, true. so that's. I mean, I mean, you could, yeah, you could, you could defer it to Easter, but it may well, um, uh, we may well go back to back level three. So, I guess it's it's just a matter of sort of. Um, yeah, I mean, we're still what two months out, uh, so hopefully. Um, you know, I mean, maybe whatever we put in plan, we have a backup. If you know, obviously, if it's, if there's a COVID yeah. level rise, then we don't get charged or whatever. And I'm and I'm pretty sure most of those groups, including traffic management, would understand that and be be um, happy to to work in with that. So, and I know obviously over the next few weeks, it needs to be or the next couple of weeks, it needs to be decided on. So we could probably call a workshop. Um, yes. over the next week or so. Um, okay. That would Garrett? Be Garrett? Yeah. You're on mute. You're on mute, Garrett. I was just going to say, Claire, are there any experiences over and above that traffic plan that if you're committed to going ahead, I mean, I'm, I'm loath to call off Christmas. That's really a grunge thing to do. Um, <laughs> Is there any other expenses you're committed to going ahead on that apart from the traffic plan? I, 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 there's nothing. There is. The, the, firstly, you've got to find out where you can find the monies from it. So that's something I've got. To, we've got to, as a board, work on, or whoever the committee is. And the other one is uh, just telling people. So they can get their floats ready and and whatever, whatever, whatever. So you're talking you're talking PR and a traffic plan. I mean, yes, but yeah, the I but the traffic management people 
say they'd like it three months in advance and we're already over that. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I didn't appreciate that. So okay. there is actually, uh, I mean, I did talk to uh, our, our, our feathers. I have heard nothing. I, I've heard, no, I've written three or four times to him. Um, so I, and then I thought, well, maybe that's because nobody's certain. But I, I as I say, at this stage, I don't think it's going to be that much more expensive if it is, because it's literally a recycled thing. Yeah. And yeah. I think. Yeah. I just think it's a, I just think it's a shame to call it off. That's all. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think we will, but it's, it's, I mean, we could possibly make it a week later just in case. Instead of always uh, um, uh, say, uh, have it on the twelfth and not the fourth, that's all um, yeah. of December. Um, so sorry, Claire. Have you said? Are you saying you haven't heard back from Peter for traffic management? No. Nope. Oh, okay. Um, oh, okay. Because I mean, yeah. As I say, talking about these signs today with Chris, uh, talking about the flag tracks, um, I sent them through. Peter's detail. I spoke to him this afternoon. So, um, I mean, I'm happy to ring him tomorrow oh, yeah. and just say to him, "Have you have you sent him through what's needed?" Because when I did speak to him about something else, I mentioned the the Christmas parade, and he said that he would just pretty much, you know, copy and paste what happened over the last however many years. Um, and I said that's fine, but just do it cheaper. And uh, and he was quite able to do that. So, have you sent? Everything. I, well, I've I've written to him to say what was it that he'd need, and I just haven't heard a thing back. I mean, we've okay. so so um, it, it's more the fact that I've I, I went through his website. I've heard nothing, so I'm not even mm. sure if I'm getting to the right person. Yeah. So I've written and written and written, and um, probably I just need to. If you could ring him and just give him my number and say, please, can you get hold of her? That would be great. Yeah. Well, can you, can you, yeah, can you send me through the, the past traffic plans that you've had? I, I can do that. Yeah, do that because yeah. it's just Peter at Traffic sub, Assist, Traffic Assist, I think he's called yeah. Dot NZ. Yeah, look, do that and I'll, I'll get hold of him tomorrow. Okay, I'll, I'll do that after this awesome. meeting. All right, so sorry, it's um, at, at trafficassist.co. Uh, sorry, hold on. I'll just I'll just find it here for you. Um, okay. I'll I'll flick it through you. I'm pretty sure it's Peter at trafficassist.nz, but I'll confirm that for right. you, Claire. Okay. Awesome. All right, so I think we've c covered off the three waters. Um, and I thank you, um, Alex. I did get a, a letter from the mayor um, to just say that the vacant lot, there's about $170,000 um, yeah. that's coming to Featherston. And I think we do need to be able to tell our community that it is there and to understand what we should be doing with it. Mm. I think that needs to I'd just be just, a little bit I'd be a little bit careful on that at the moment clear because it could open up um, uh, it was always put aside and it was agreed that when it was put aside that it would be um, decided on how it would be used by the community board and the community. Absolutely. Um, and when I spoke to um, Katrina a little while back about what was still there after fees and, and what have you, and it was 170, whatever. Um, I just think if we if we put it out there that we've got 170 grand to be spent within the community, we're going to get all these ideas. Um, I think we're possibly better to actually work out. Um, maybe we have some sort of workshop as to how we how we approach that with the community. I would um, agree. I think that's a yeah. very good idea, and I do agree totally with um, you but it was what the next stage was was when we did make the understanding for the sale of this land yeah um we did discuss something happening within the first two after first two years it's actually over two years now yep. and um it's still a vacant yep. lot um i know that there was a community group that would have really really liked to have 
maybe owned that on behalf of Featherston and done something with it. Is there any way that we can actually find out what is going to happen with that piece of land? I did speak to, um, oh, man, what's his name? The owner? Uh, Brad. 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 Sorry, shit, go on. Um, spoke to Brad probably uh, two or three months ago because he was um, interest of people doing pop-up containers and, and what have you. Mm -hmm. And I just said to him, you know, without sort of putting pressure on, ha have you got any plans as to what you're going to be doing? And he said, obviously, with our initial COVID lockdown, that put a, a bit of a kibosh on things, but there is things in plan. Um, and I don't really want to go in it too much. But I suppose, yeah, I mean, it was agreed that there would be something done within two years. Yeah, Mark, uh, can I comment on that? Yeah, mate, yeah, yeah. So, yes, so, um, Claire, I've always been in touch with Brad over this. Brilliant. Okay. Um, COVID did stuff him up last year, and, and when it first came, it you know, because that was a big hit for his business, and, and it was new to him. Um, again, COVID has stuffed it up, but there is something coming, um, and I'll, um, you yeah, know, it's business practice that he, he should release that. Oh, um, I, I so, just need to know if it's happening, you know? Yes, it is. Brilliant. Thank you, Bryce. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Um, Thank you. That's great. Um, and I I um, did seek under the Official Information Act after a meeting, um, sorry, the Legoma, uh, about the mayoral task force. And I've uh, just tabled that for uh, interest on the mayoral task force and who makes the decisions. Uh, it was interesting to see that, um, that there were no businesses, no businesses employed youth through the scheme in Featherston, which was a little bit worrying, but there were um, five youths employed who lived in Featherston. Um, but it's got, it doesn't quite, that's, I'm not quite sure because how many youth were placed in employment, it then says there were zero. So I'm not quite sure um, with, yeah, whether, I'm, I'm not quite sure how that relates. <laughs> uh, if there were no youth in Featherston placed in employment, I don't know where the five youth who lived in Featherston were employed. So that's a little confusing there. Um, of, of from the year, um, what was it, June, um, there were, from June to July 2020, in the pilot scheme, 30 young people were employed. Uh, this uh, mayoral task force is an employment scheme for youth who've been hit by COVID. Um, and uh, I did ask, what businesses were involved in getting the funding that ha hasn't been answered in this. But um, from the July 2020 to 2021, there were 30, well, there were 30 people placed in employment of which 12 were still employed. And that cost um, the ministry spent $385,000 to get those 30 people into work, which then ended up as 12. So for me, there is a concern about the cost um, to our communities and why it should have cost so much, 385,000 to get 12 youths employed seems to be a lot. So I'd, I'd like to find out a little bit more as to whether the Fano Trust uh, receives money for putting people into employment, or the youth justice people, who's employed and how much they're employed, or, or as if this money goes directly to the youth who are going into employment. But anyway, um, this was the Official Information Act request information I got on the Mayoral Task Fund initiative um, for 2021. So that was it. And that's the end of my report. 
Awesome. Thanks, Claire. No other questions or clarification on that from anybody? Do we have a move to, to um, accept their report? Do we, we, did we do All right. We, we no, haven't I, moved that, have we? Have we no, I don't that? think so. I'll, I'll move the week. That's right. Sorry. I feel like a bit of horse before card again. Um, I will move uh, to receive that. Do we have a seconder? I'll second it. Jason, thank you. All those in favour, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Those against, please say no or raise your hand. Motion carried. Thank you. All right. So that's it for the evening. Thank you. Um, Katie, you've seen what you're in for. So I see you're still here. So it can't be too bad. So thank you. And thanks, Bryce, for um, chirping in where we needed you. Yeah, sorry. I was late. And um, no, you're right, mate. We're used to that. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's us. Thank you. Have the rest of the night off. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. 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 Thank you.